Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Very good morning from India, and uh, and I hope everyone is safe and sound at right wherever you are watching me. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for Red Team Security Summit for having me on the platform. And uh, I have listened to a few of the talks, and I must say that uh, it's it's really really informative. Um, from today's my talk, I'll make sure that it will be very crisp and I'll try to wrap it up before the time, just to respect the time I have, they have given to me. And um, I'm sure you are familiar with the topic, but what is, what is, what is with me? That is your, uh, hello, I think someone is joining me on the call. Hi, everyone. Very good morning to you. Oh, I just started before you came. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so uh, hi everyone. Here is uh, Rahul Tag, and here is here to take a session on quantifying people cyber risk in your organization. And uh, I'm very glad that you joined us on Red Team Security Summit 2020, and I officially welcome you to the summit. And uh, sir, the stage is all yours. I, I hand over the session to you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. thank you so much, Vish. So coming back to the same thing that I was talking about that. <coughs> Especially after the pandemic, you know, cyber uh, human risk is big, became the one of the most biggest priority for a lot of our clients, I must say. So, and uh, if you see from last five to five years or to ten years, traditionally the level of investment an organization is doing on the on the tech stack part is, if you compare with that, the human element it's very very less. So, in terms of the monitoring or real time threat detection, that's other case, but. In terms of really educating the employee and really ensuring the overall understanding of the cyber hygiene within the organization so the level of investment there was pretty much less but after the pandemic definitely we have seen a very big spike in terms of uh, getting the right budgets for for individual trainings and the cyber hygiene trainings within the organization now my talk will be centric on how my organization and us are are really trying to quantify the this insider threat problem and people in your organization because yeah, there is a saying in one of the one of the forum that uh, in cybersecurity you can patch any technology but there is no patch of human stupidity. Now you can actually only you can only minimize it but you cannot eliminate it. So what it takes to go as close as possible to to really mitigate this risk. I will be talking about that, about our experience, our, our journey as an organization to really quantify the people's security within your organization. Now, without wasting time, let me share my screen and uh, I would love to take the questions after the session. Please drop down in the questions which are there. So I hope you can see my screen. So let me share my screen also. Okay, so again, my name is Rahul and I'm the co-founder of Lucidus. Um, and today's my talk is quantifying people cyber risk in your organization. A little bit about our organization. Um, we are a cyber risk quantification based company and uh, our work is to design or give some kind of solutions to the organization or platform which gives an organization a right and real time view in terms of where their vulnerabilities are. And most of you may may know us in terms of a cyber security training but uh, it's been uh, i think five years we have shut it down the training and now we are a platform based company uh, this is a little bit of our our, uh, our, our journey that uh, we incubated out of iit bombay and uh, then headquarter right now in palo alto uh, we have a couple of investors and especially john chambers who is our mentor and investor we have some senior executives into our board from SoftBank, Sequoia, PayPal, Adobe, and McKinsey also. Um, we were the top five contributors in NVD in 2019. And uh, the thing I was talking about, the quantification in cybersecurity. Now, quantification algorithm, which is our proprietary, along with the MIT and IIT, we are working with for many years that how together um, we can design some kind of uh, an algorithm through which you can really help an organization to really see the risk in a, in a quantified manner. Now, just to give you a small example of that, if I ask you right now, what is the battery status in your phone or maybe in laptop right now, <clears throat> you can actually quantify that. You can say it's around 10%, 20%, or maybe 50%. But if I ask you the same question in a different manner, if I ask you that, 
how secure can you can you can you tell me how secure is your phone or laptop right now now you may say you have antivirus you have endpoint solutions so and so forth but still it is not a quantified answer <clears throat> it's kind of a subjective answer you can say so this is a problem statement we try to solve and uh, i think we are pretty much successful in that to put a number put a scientific number on the risk which which is there in your organization in terms of any vulnerability which exists and um, in 2019 we did, we got a morgan stanley cto innovation award with our product as i mentioned earlier so this is a little bit about our organization just to set the context that what i'm talking today is our expertise domain and whatever we learned from my team and what i learned from my team and our research from three to five years out of all these activities that i will try to share with you now before proceeding to my talk i would like to talk about that what actually changed in 2020 and what are the new new threat trends in 2020 the first is capabilities of growing and cyber growing and cyber tools becoming more easily available now cyber security tools were easily available i think in our era today is really restricted but the problem is that people have now more time to really research or you can say thanks to pandemic they they are putting more research time putting more digging pipe or uh, digging part in deep and dark web or some other public domain to to get the right tools for the and especially script kiddies because they, they are pretty much curious to know more about what is new in the market and second is more countries intend on using these weapons for cyber espionage and influence uh, influence things like elections and so on and so forth now in the second point i want to highlight one thing that these cyber espionage is not only related to as an, an organization if you live in bombay or one of the metro cities in india we have seen n number of cases where people have complained that they are they are, they are a victim of sim swapping or they are after clicking a link on their sms or their email they think that they are being spied 24 into 7 by by one of the hackers somewhere in the world so companies actually paying money into the to these organized criminal gangs to really go behind an individual who is a think tank in a C-suite level of an organization and then really do a chaotic things with them to, to, so that he will not perform or either because of his activities, his company will throw out of it. And I must say that out of 170% ratio is there where organization have really thrown those people out of the organization because of they've been breached and because of them the uh, stuff is being released within the market. A continuous blurring between state and non-state actors is, is, a, is a new thing because we can't differentiate between the criminals and the organized uh, state-sponsored criminals which are there. And that's why if you don't understand your enemy, you, if you don't know your enemy, you cannot plan accordingly. Uh, Cybercrime groups becoming more specialized and more organized, I must say. They were previously they were organized, but now it's 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 all new era and all new level they have achieved. And uh, due to the mobile revolution in in the world and especially in India, mobile as an attack growing importantly, and uh, you can expect more. We have seen it start developing the way ransomware is inspecting your mobile uh, your systems right now. As an organization, you will see in future that. In, in, in a couple of months, I must say that mobile ransomware will become, especially on Android, I must say, will come very, very soon. Uh, Cloud-related breaches happened a very, 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 very big uh, number in 2020, and, uh, and and mostly, I think it was more over um, negligency of the of the organization because they are maybe using the default credentials or maybe AWS was not configured properly, so on and so forth. And the last one is ransomware attack becoming endemic. And I think the, we have seen uh, from 2017 to 2020 the rise of ransomware in the world. And the techniques they are using now after really getting into the uh, after in, after getting into the organization through a human error, how they really go ahead with that and uh, do the more damage. I will, I will touch touch upon that topic also. Now <clears throat> Once a human error leads an individual to get into the organization, previously it was they will encrypt your data and come out of it, or they can do maybe a, they can extract something or dump the data, exfiltrate some kind of information and come out of it. Now these are the four elements they look for after when they get into the organization, and that's mostly happening using the later movement and privilege escalation to, from from where they have entered. 
Now, the first thing they will now, now they look into it is to understand what is of value and how much they can extort. Previously, it was infecting the mass. If you have heard from the Sony breach, they obviously they were into the network from a long time and they have extracted and then they blocked everything and they ripped everything. Now, the value is the most important that what value is, is the data is carrying and obviously to to get into this this point to to understand the value you have to be uh, you have to be for a longer time or period within their networks to to understand what is valuable and what is not and especially what are their crown jewels who are carrying the most sensitive information it can be payment information it can be any any kind of financial information within the organization <clears throat> identifying the key stream and data that could be encrypted steal data whose uh, release will create potential regulatory fines and reputation damage now this third point i want to pay attention that if you're thinking that they are only doing a financial damage to you countries like japan or some other countries where if you lose money it's not a big deal but if you lose your face it's a big deal and we have seen the same case in the embarrassment they have shown at the time of sony hack which was happened when all the c-suite was in the press conference and and they bow down in terms of the crowd and say we are sorry of the hack so now after encrypting your data after to, due to the human error once you are infected then they are more more serious in terms of putting you into regulatory fine and especially if you're you were, if you're operating in europe and taking the european data and all you can imagine the, num the level of fine you can expect after a breach when it will happen so it's kind of an it's an out direct direct impact into your uh, system but along with that it's kind of an uh, time-based uh, effect which will come to you also after the breach because there will be law enforcement organizations and the regulatory bodies will be behind you and this is the reason most of the organization don't report to the right authorities because they're afraid that if it comes in the public it will be a problem for them and the last is encrypted and disabled backups making recovery impossible and uh, this we have seen in now in the cases for ransomware which are being sold in the market right now they are designed in a way that after infection first they will do is they will try to disable the backup by default of windows 10 and so and so forth and if it is having a connectivity with the AD or they were able to push it to the AD, then they try to go to the backup servers and make sure that the recovery is impossible and i think these are the techniques and tactics which are becoming a problem for the organization and now definitely they don't have any alternate but to pay to these criminal and this is the feeding more this is feeding more attack it's like it's like oiling the machinery which is already there for the criminals and we are the people who are feeding it with the right oil which is the money which we are paying them before uh, so that they can keep on going with that so this is a little bit of context now i'll come back to the um human error part the insider threat part or you can say the people uh, security now as for our experience so from last uh, year uh, like you can say seven to eight years what we have seen is these are the more foremost targeted departments within the organization by organized criminal gangs and uh, i'll show you a audio video also from cisco where they have shown that how organizations can well, how cyber criminals can get into you from your sales team especially i'll give you an example of our company how we do all the things in our organization it's finance hr and sales and finance and sales especially Whenever someone joins in our organization, and this is kind of an actionable input for you guys also, without any investment, you, what you can do is in your onboarding plan, make sure at least we have over one dedicated day on cybersecurity attacks, documentaries, or some kind of videos which will help them to understand the techniques and tactics which a criminal use to get into the organization. It can be fake view, it can be scam, it can be social media scam, so and so forth. And we see that this becoming a very effective tool for us because most of our finance team and sales team is pretty much uh, technical now, even they are not from uh, the hardcore technical background, but giving a one day only and only in cybersecurity understanding and cyber hygiene within your organization can do a very big impact. It is just like when you are opening a bank account, most of the banks, they don't talk about the cyber hygiene or maybe there is, they will be phishing on your accounts. Uh, there will be a don't share your OTP, but once you, onboarded with the bank and then they keep on pushing you the sms and email nobody which nobody pays mostly right and no no attention actually so my request to each and everyone who is uh, watching me as an organization person or security persona who is uh, designing the mechanism of security and cyber hygiene practices 
please make sure that whenever someone is on board in your organization at least one day at least eight hours should be there for his learning and especially with the use cases i don't want you to show him the presentation then bore them with other things but some of the use cases or case studies through that they will understand that in their work what in, in how many ways any criminal can get into you and uh, what are the things they they need to take care of them i'll give you an example that one of our accounts department was being targeted by a few of the individuals and uh, one of my person really replied him that uh, sorry i understand your attack and uh, there is a there is a problem with your exploit and i really love that the way they have answered it and then then we didn't got anything from them so 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 empowering your finance team and sales team is one of the most priority for you which i'm unfortunately people are not paying attention because you think finance and sales you need to add into the you need to add into the traditional way of uh, information security awareness like there is a there is a training in your organization for all employees or maybe a session then you involve finance and sales into the into that training this is not going to work because uh, these are the two departments who carry the most sensitive information of your organization and uh, rest of the department still can wait but these are the two departments who needs to have better better understanding of the attacks and all and you you need to educate them as a responsibility so that they will not be a part of this type of breaches now i'll show you a small 2 minutes audio video of a uh, Cisco that is known as insiders of hackers mind uh, i shared this on linkedin last night and i thought that it should be a good way of it's kind of a new use case which you can use in your organization to help your sales team and other teams to understand how actually a criminal gets into you and how they gather the information and how they exploit it let me show you the video i hope you can see my screen so let me show that How did you decide to become a hacker? Well, I'm not really sure what it means to become a hacker. That's like some guy on the internet who types really fast and stays up all night writing code and cracking passwords. So me. I just spy on people and see what makes them click. It's not a bad job. So you consider this a job? I put a lot of work into this. I'm not lazy. It takes research to figure out the key players, learn all about them, the families, the friends, what they care about. You have to understand the company's organization. I get a lot of my information from the sales department because they're always so quick and eager. They're hungry. People trust too easily. They don't look at the details. I do. Details matter. That's what I'm good at. It has to look completely believable. It has to look familiar. This is where research is important. It's not some generic piece of spam. It's an email from the boss with the company's signature. It's written in the voice of the boss. It's what he would say if he were writing this. What about the malware itself? How does that work? Somebody else knows they already wrote all the code that does the actual attack. I'm just using it in the attachment. My skills is in my ability to get a bunch of people to click on that attachment. I always wonder what it's like when the whole thing unfolds on their end. When the panic sets in, how do you get that chapter to be?
ransomware was just to distract us. They got inside. They got everything. Customer data, financials, everything. Well, the card is reading today from the news that hackers have released a personal information of nearly the Nasdaq closed its doors today, led by Polycard, which was down 14% on news that their recent data breach may be far worse. The company originally fell to a new all time low on news that CEO Mark Hannon is stepping down after what is turning out to be one of the worst breaches of personal information in recent history. Do you feel bad about releasing the personal information, all the financials, all the money that was lost? All I did was get the files. I'm not the one that decided to release them. I'm not the one that shorted the stock. Somebody else had their reasons for that. Above my pay grade. I was paid to do a job and it did well. So this is a classic example for your sales team to understand where obviously when when we are expecting customers as an organization and definitely the level of communications which are happening online now with knowns and unknowns you share so much information towards into the market and into the wild and uh, like in this in this specific case what they have done is they have copied the email signature which is kind of a good thing to have by a criminal and then Establish a domain and send a fake mail to, to, to the same thing. Now, these type of use cases, uh, I think, uh, if you can share with your team, especially these four departments, and, and the top two, two is like must to go on. And these are the must departments to, to share these type of case studies. I think then the level of understanding they have right now, they, they are sure that your organization will be in the better shape and position. And it's, it needs a zero investment, I think. Just put somewhere. Put someone in your in, in your organization who is good in terms of finding the right case studies, make a document out of it, and just circulate that. And then uh, talk to the art reporting managers and told them that put it into their OKRs or whatever it takes, and uh, make sure that they go through these type of stuff which are there. Now I'll show you a little bit of small case study which we recently busted, and uh, uh, it was kind of it's a multinational company in uh, in Spain and. Um, we did a report reading of the learning out of the hack. They got breached and uh, we did uh, stuff there. And after that, whatever we found, we shared with them. So how the attack was uh, was organized that the attacker used a phishing and series of phishing mails, especially to the sales team and the finance team, and uh, try to get into it. And after that, they hit some one of the IT team members also through that. And, um, and they target the legacy equipment, which are there, and thanks, thanks to Thanks to the people there, it was on default passwords. They are having default credentials, so it was not very difficult for them to get into and recirculate the things here and there. And the worst part was that the lack of monitoring was so bad that they were like, it took, it took, it took them four months to really detect what's going on there. So the hackers and the criminal, organized criminals were were there in today network for almost four months. And four months is like, it's like 120 days, you know. So failure to protect the system administration, there was no multi-factor authentication. And, uh, and and this is something, again, I don't still understand that. Multi-factor authentication is something which is which is kind of the must in 2020 and onward. So in your organization, you have to see that what are the crown jewels or what are the, what are the areas of the individuals which are carrying the most sensitive information. Are they behind them, MFA or 2FA, whatever it is there. This is the least at least you can do within your organization. Now the attack, we I think we minimized because uh, in terms of and there was an offline backup which was available and uh, and segmentation limited later moment that was a good thing. So from the local groups, they were unable to jump into the other groups or get the more privileges which were there. So that was the second good part. And the third one, which was the best part out of it, when we read the entire case study, how they did that and what what we need to recommend them is uh, effective and rapid incident response. Even even the real-time monitoring was bad, but once they know that what uh, what what's happening there, the way they respond to the situation, so their incident response response was pretty much good. And that, that is the same thing I think we have seen in the FireEye case when they got hacked. Today is not a success. So today you breached is not a problem, but the success ratio is how fast you will recover with the minimum damage. And that is a success ratio. So it's, it's 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 impossible to say that whether you will hack, you will never be hacked. But it's 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 possible to say that what level of minimum damage you can really have 
after being hacked and how fast you will come back uh, online for your customers is the success ratio in 2020 and onwards i feel now over 90 percent of successful cyber attacks have a human element into it and uh, this is again we have seen in the recent twitter case also and whether twitter got hacked and uh, and the X number of news, you know, I think you have seen more than me that how many news which are floating around right now that because of the human error, this happened, that happened, so and so forth. Now, I'll give you a little bit now understanding of the people, how as our organization, we were able to tackle the human element security problem and what, what we are doing to really take care of that. And I'm sure that that, that, that take away the, the, the scientific approach towards solving this problem will, will really help you to understand in a, in a better manner to have some action item for your organization. Now, every organization, if we want to protect it, then we are, there are five parameters or five vectors we have to look into it. One is your cybersecurity products, whether they are configured properly or not, because adding a cybersecurity product into your organization is a different game when you plug and play that. But whether it is optimized with the right settings, that level of knowledge you need to give to your organization individuals too really scale up the usability or the ROI of that hardware or software to the next level. So one is this and then is this internal technology, whatever which is running on an IP address, is it secure or not? Third is your compliance, your policies and processes. And fourth is your external, your third parties. We have seen that in the past, majority of the third parties, when they got breach, it hits your organization also because you have hired them on one of the same thing. So these four parts we were able to quantify. If you if you remember, right, as I told you, um, our our expertise little bit is in putting a number into into a risk. It can be on any part which is there. So all four parts was covered. And one and a half year back, we we thought how we can actually quantify a human risk. And trust me, it was a very big task because. It's so dynamic in nature as a human being. It's very difficult to predict what they will do, what they will not. But uh, so, so, so the people part. How how trustable is your employee? How you can put a number on an individual? It's like the Black Mirror movie when you put a put a security status, social security status on an individual. How how good is that? That human and bad is that human? Being? So the scale and complexity was huge, and that's where the MIT come to the picture where we, we, we jointly research and come up with some kind of a thing. And, and if you see the entire ecosystem of your organization, this is employee and he's surrounded with all these things, all the security products and uh, within the, uh, along with you. So you're doing everything to ensure the infrastructure and all, but the human element, which is the core part of the organization is definitely missing. So what, what it takes to make the people your strength link and uh, and to ensure that, I think uh, I'll start with one of the basic thing which you can, you guys can do. Um, what what is the problem which we have seen? So globally, there are 32 products in the market, which uh, as for the Gartner or you can say the companies who, who works on the CBT training, computer based training and cybersecurity training. What we have seen the problem with most of the trainings is that. Uh, and why they address to solve this issue is, is the first problem is what is in for me? Every employee is already burdened with a lot of their work, a lot of uh, HR initiatives, a lot of other things. And I'm sorry to say they're already pissed off with the traditional way of learning and so on and so forth. So whenever you're saying that, okay, you need to learn something new, they, are, they will never be, they will be exhausted because they don't want to do that unless and until there is something for them inside it. So I'll give an example. When we start developing our product, what we realize in our IS awareness, what should be the why? Why should I will do the why? Why should I will learn the cyber hygiene? Because it's not because it's not because my organization has said so. It's because in that training module there has to be some kind of module which will which will first touch as a human being. First, you are a human being. Then you are a, maybe a family member, and then you are an employee of the organization. And most of the uh, products or the, you can see the, the solution providers are focusing on the business problem first. But so you have to reverse it first. He's a human being and he's greedy. And obviously he's greedy and he's, he's, he's kind of a mean in terms of if it is not having a personal interest of, of, uh, of doing anything, he will not do that. So what we did is we come up with like modules like 
um, how to protect your child from cyber cyber um, uh, cyber hazards you know now that's that really attracts most of the parents and along with that we added few more modules like how to protect your o365 how to protect now because he's he he, he has interest into that module at least he's coming to the platform biggest problem for for entire um, organizations who adopt these type of learning platforms people don't pay attention and people it's a pain for a CISO to onboard them to learn something and um, when we highlight these type of topics like how to secure your playstation 4 playstation 5 xbox and these are very small things but really attracts people because they, they are they are already bored with the traditional way of uh, uh, learning and all and most of the learning based systems are or on web based learning you know and today you see you everything we are doing on mobile so who really cares about logging into the laptop and start learning out of it and all and even the best example is uh, udemy or coursera or other social media or other learning platforms if you remember they started with a web and now most of their active customers are from mobile and today may or may not you don't have a laptop but to reach more crowd or you can say to reach more um uh, audience mobile is becoming the best platform so out of those gartner listed products i must say only one or two were having the mobile based learning otherwise everyone was not having only web so every time i need to uh, learn myself i have to open my laptop or again if i open in my mobile browser that's the aspect ratio and design is not good and the next was the outdated topics you know once the, and this is a, a challenge for us also and we were trying to solve it and uh, pretty much successful in it usually in the learning awareness system the modules which are introduced and the videos which the learning videos were there they for example it is how to secure your android phone or how to secure your ios so with every release of the uh, update with every operating system update it's very difficult to embed that and change that video with the new settings so this is something is uh, is really is really frustrate people sometimes because when they see the video okay i want to protect my android phone but the, the video is like two years old and he's now on a different version of the operating system so learning management systems need to pay attention to that and if you're adopting your platform you need to pay attention to that content also again and it's a small thing but trust me it creates a huge difference uh, no cyber hygiene onboarding plan now this is this we have seen also again as I, as I mentioned earlier when someone is onboarding in your organization please make sure that uh, there has to be an onboarding in onboarding entire plan that he should pay attention to the cyber hygiene he should don't don't just throw away the policies to him in nature folder nobody nobody watch that and trust me it's our being a cyber security company also we have seen that our employees were neglected to do that then we converted into the videos and all now they are paying attention definitely uh way to aware centric now most of the training trainings which are education which are happening is more over like compliance based like is awareness training you need to do in every quarter or maybe a year or maybe a by by month by annually or something like that so that is on the awareness side that is not on the problem solving side so you have to identify the problem statement design the problem statements content and then do aware the organization don't design the awareness part and then tell the people what to do so that you need to reverse that first you have to analyze your organization that what exactly the problems we are seeing from the long time what type of attacks which are coming from last one month or two months and then design that awareness training into those individuals and departments and then show them the training what is required and trust me it doesn't require too much of investment it just need pretty much of monitoring right way of data sets and preparing the right content for your audience to, to go through now According to a report that age, gender, and industry plays an important role in your cybersecurity behavior, and uh, I will I will show you a, a network also which will help you to understand. I'll give an example as for a study that female employees in an organization has a less probability of being hacked than the male employees of an organization. Now this is kind of an and that's the reason in one of our product we we ask the person what is what is your what is your age and what is your gender. It's not that we are gender biased, but uh, but definitely there there is there is a, there, there is a very scientific way of uh, we can collect offline. I'll share that with you to make you understand that how a gender can play a very important role. And um, 
and and that that's the thing few more class tests and by respecting the time i should move on now this is what a traditional approach of most of the security awareness platforms and the solutions which you are looking for to problem to to solve the problem as a human insider one is phishing exercise training and awareness cyber security policies so if you see most of the bundles which comes to an organization is in the shape of phishing and uh, training and awareness either it is that either it is cyber policies either it is uh, mdm or mmm solutions either it is leaked uh, data credentials in the deep and dark web so these all are different services which you cannot get at a one platform what we realized is that how we can club all this together into one one platform and scientifically collect data sources or data points through which a criminal can get into the in, get into that individual and then after compiling all with our ai and ml based algorithm which i talked about with mit can give a score to an individual i'm sure you didn't get what i tried to say that what i trying what i am trying to say but let me give you an example i hope in the in, in your school or college you have done the theorem known as bayes theorem so with 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 the in our algorithm what we did is we designed an algorithm which is known as bayes through a bayesian network now what is the beautiful what is the beauty of bayesian network what how a human element can be had how human element can be exploited by the criminals so you need to have the right data sets to monitor them what exactly they need uh, did how you can protect it now this is exactly our bayesian network which i'm showing you right now this is how we lucidus as an organization quantify the people every individual in your organization i'll start with this okay yeah so out of 100 we say 95% will 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 95% will 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 ensure that you will not be hacked 5% is for the unknown if there is a zero day come and so on and so forth definitely it's it's nothing you can do but uh, let's talk about this one so to give you a number uh, that how secure is employee so for that individual employee these are the data sets we collect we analyze and after collecting each and everything you will give you a probability that your probability of your breach is from 0 to 5 here now what are the things we take care of in that which you can you, you can do also let's take an example of this one for example so in your user profile we take care of you the profile your age your tenure in the company your ex employee of the computer account of uh, assigned assessment your state is it uh, under pro his probation is it under pi pap is he is he just promoted and uh, in criticality there are other things like uh, is he now executive what type of exposure he is having is he authorized to the vpn within the organization so this is people information malicious any information which is with us for an individual is malicious or not so after crossing this then we have pre recruitment screening controls from the hr's point of view are we hiring the right person or maybe we are you hired a criminal you don't know so the background verification check which should come from a hr but you should come from a cyber security point of security point of view also we map that also after that we have csp how many individual cyber security products are placed within the company who to take care of that employees engagements or his uh, behavior which is there and then again the level of attack vector prevention controls can be training can be new policies and how many awareness training programs he has done what was his score so and so forth and then again lateral movement controls once if it is being hacked then in the csp how that individual is being protected and uh, what are the security solutions which are there within within your organization and uh, how these 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 uh, security controls and the policies are established to help that individual to not to be breached more or demo, to get a more damage out of it and this is one we have a uh, here also cyber security campaign flag accidental lateral movement accident prevention control so imagine clubbing all these information now one question maybe in your head will be that rahul 
this is a hell lot of information which you are collecting and what if if i don't have a few of the nodes or few of the data of this, this section maybe now the beauty of the bayesian network is that even you don't have this this table or this table or this table still the algorithm will work perfectly maybe with a less probability of the risk but it will still give you a number as per whatever you will feed into it for example if some organization can collect only one two or three three nodes and leaves out of it still they will get a number so out of whatever you feed to the engine whatever you feed to the algorithm it will give you a number from 0 to 5 now imagine the the complexity which is with the it team it will not be visible to the organization but now you can actually predict how secure your individual by having a confidence that i am checking this level of information which i'm not sure any organization in the world is really looking into it and that's the reason that when we show this um, show our this approach towards the uh, CISOs and CIOs or the CISO, they really look up to it in a very, very serious way because it's the level of granularity we have put into this algorithm is, is really, 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 really uh, ground shaking. So I must say that after this, we will we'll count the probability of the breach. We will not tell you it's green, right? We will tell you the exact the probability of the breach that by next 12 months, what is the probability of that individual to be hacked? Uh, based on these uh, parameters which are there and everything is automated so in real time so what also for example uab control is established there if the person is usually he takes care of the work at 12 a.m or maybe 1 a.m he's sleeping now one time he's for, for a continuous one week he's uh, logging logged in into a, into the system at 3 30 a.m then we'll check from these cyber security products and later movement controls and then maybe because of because it's unusual happening will increase the probability of that individual to be breached and alert the admin which is there to check into that whether it is some uh, intentional thing which was there or it's kind of an accidental attack which is there and then we'll give them the safe score now just now the c-suite members people who are at the decision making capabilities and the very high level and people they, are, they don't care about what exactly you are taking or whatever they only want to know this one so we will give them every individual in an organization we want to put a number out of it zero one to five or zero to five more score is up more secure you are more secure is less secure is you are not secure then then, then you are not uh, secure and this is what exactly when i talk about quantification of uh, people's security this is how we do i'm not sure how many other organizations are doing and how granular they are doing but trust me this is this is the level of granularity we are putting into the action and uh, we are trying to really map each and every hint a parameter or a fluctuation in terms of the behavior of the user from from the help of all the tools and clubbing all the things together like as i mentioned that we are clubbing all the things together into one piece and uh, helping them to go to the next level so this is Bayesian network and uh, I know it, it's a very complex thing and uh, if you have time I would love to connect you offline with each and every one of yours and uh, and why why this talk was uh, pretty much important because this is something which we really helped us to help help us to really think through it that why people risk is uh, is a problem and why it is a it, it is a it is a solvable problem I can say it's not a big task the only thing is the the way you look at the problem was a different till now in the industry and uh, as I, and this is where i will conclude my talk that in the age of digital marketing where tailored advertisement are shown based on your profile with respect to your cookies or your recent history take an example of amazon or google adword why not cyber security till catch up to be able to secure an individual based on their profile and personal context i think this is the approach we everyone we should uh, put into it from your uh, user behaviors, from everything, how, why not we can profile a person and uh, we can predict whether his actions can lead him to hack or not. And uh, that is what uh, exactly we'll do. Now, the last thing I will close, and after this, I will close my session, and uh, I'm sorry if I'm beyond the time. I think I'm on time, sharp on time. I'm, I'm happy with, with my punctuality. So it's 12 o'clock, so yeah, thank you. So. So the last thing is that uh, for especially for the students and uh, for the organizations so we we just launched this product i think last week it's absolutely free for the consumer and in india and globally if you see no one has taught us how to secure your whatsapp how to secure your whatsapp 
how to secure your gmail it comes naturally to us even a mobile phone you know no no parents taught you how to securely use your mobile phone so we if you if you heard about the uh, baidu's app and all so we introduced this in the world uh, last week and it's absolutely free please pay attention to it and show to your parents especially it is available in hindi and english it's known as safe me we have a 100 plus cyber security courses there and uh, please share your feedback and i'm sure that people who are on the call and watching me are maybe more intelligent than me and uh, so any feedback works uh, for us and i'm very open to the feedbacks so please uh, share your uh, valuable feedback to me it will be a great help so thank you so much guys for listening to me it was a pleasure once again and uh, and uh, and close my talk thank you any questions okay i have to go to the question answer session now okay no questions i think either you understood everything either you understood nothing so i'm i'm okay with both of the things thank you so much okay so i think you are you are on mute uh, uh wish i'm sorry i'm sorry am i audible sir yes you are audible thank you thank you so much thank you so much for the interesting session it was gripping it was informative and your slides were really interesting and as uh, the same way your talk as well so i thank you once again for joining the team security summit 2020 and uh, we are very ex- like we are extremely happy to have you here and uh, we'll wind up the session right now and i also request all the participants there is another interesting section happening on uh, mastering the aws amazon web <laughs> <clears throat> web service pandas thing so i request every like the participants to move on to the next session and once again i thank you mr rahul tagi for the interesting session that we had thank you so much thank you so much and thank you have a very good day everyone thank you so much bye bye